Okay, now we are going to talk about the minor losses. We finished the major losses section. Now let's move on to the minor losses. The first thing I want to say is this minor losses conversation is much more limited and much more simple compared to the major losses. Okay, so let's start with that. The first thing is there's always a loss coefficient associated with flow components. Okay, and that will be denoted as k sub L. Okay, and the way that we define k sub L will be HL minor divided by V square over 2G. Okay, which will also be equal to delta P over 1 half rho V square. You may remember this delta P over 1 over 2 rho V square from the major losses. Okay, that was the left hand side. This is my pi 1. Okay, so basically what I'm saying is this pi 1 will be equal to this. Okay, mini plate this HL. I want to leave it alone. So I want to just simply take this and put it over here and rearrange it for my own convenience. And I'll get myself HL minor that I'm interested in is going to be KL times V square over 2G. Okay, so this is a fairly simple way of analyzing it, okay? One thing is this actual value of KL is dependent on few things, okay? I would, I want to call it this way. It's a function of the geometry, comma, the Reynolds number, okay? But if I go back to the major losses, so I want to write this this way. When I look at the HL major, you will see that this is going to be defined like this. F, L over D, V square over 2G. It's nice to have them on the same page for comparison purposes. So let's go over here. You can say HL major versus minor. V square over 2G, V square over 2G. So you can see that this F, L over D is equal to KL. Okay. So sometimes we specify that. The reason why we don't have L in KL is this is for a bend or if you think about it this is for a valve if I have a valve it doesn't have a length it doesn't have a diameter so it's a little bit different okay so for that reason I sometimes what I do is I say KL is equal to F times L equivalent divided by the D and we can get ourselves by re-manipulating this I will get KL times the diameter divided by the F and the F is the friction factor or Darcy friction factor okay now let's look let's talk about losses itself this KL value let's look at the KL for entrance flow okay so I want to plot few things okay so I can have like a you know this is my pipe okay I can have like a straight corner like that okay in this particular case this KL will be 0 0.5 Okay, so if I have a pipe that is being formed and there's flow coming from here to here and over here like that, okay, so my KL will be 0 0.5. If I try to do some fancy manufacturing techniques so that it is kind of rounded, okay, as opposed to a sharp edged, okay, and if you look at the streamlines, it's going to be like that as well, okay. So my question is, do you think my loss is going to be decreasing or increasing? Okay. The answer is yes, it will decrease. Okay. There's not a particular value, but there's a range for that. Okay. So for instance, we can call this is, this is 0 0.2 and depending on this radius of curvature. Okay. If it is really well rounded, it goes all the way to 0 0.04. Okay. So you can see when the loss coefficient, when I compare this to this, I have a significant advantage, so I have a motivation to make sure that the pipes, when it's connected to a container, for instance, run them off, okay? Let's look at the exit flow conditions, okay? So this is now what they run. What I have is I have a pipe, right, this, and it's being connected to a container, okay? So if I look at the streamlines, the streamlines are going to be going like that, right? The arrows are this way, okay? So my question is, Let's see, and I want to do uh, some fancy tactics so that I can round it off over here as well, okay? 
So this is the second alternative that I have. So the question that I have is, is this, there's also some radius of curvature in here. So is this much better than that? Because what I said for the entrance was um, that this case will be much better, right? So let's take a look at it. So KL for here will be 1.0, okay? So if we also go ahead and measure KL for this case, guess what? I'm gonna get 1.0 as well. So now, obviously, from the manufacturing perspective, this will be a much more expensive technique, right? But there's no advantage. I'm just talking about the fluid mechanics. I'm, I'm not talking about other aspects. For instance, there may be some crack formation in here, etc. So that's a different story. I'm just looking at the fluid mechanics. And there's no advantage. I'm going to get the same loss. So you may not want to be investing your um, R&D dollars into designing and exit condition. Let's look at the 90 degree corner. Okay, like this. The flow is turning this, right? So what will happen is if I look at the streamlines, okay, so I'm going to get something like this, something like that. And what you can imagine over here is, let's see, the very first streamline, okay? So there will be some region that's not really being used over here, okay? And actually what the flow will do is the flow is going to separate. So if I look at my cross section over here, okay, let's plot over here. If I look at the cross section, then the flow will look like this, okay? So it's going to go up like that, but there will be some separated flow. So if I'm looking at that particular section, what I will obtain is some of the flow is going forward, some of the flow is going backwards as well, okay? So this is going to generate some loss for me. And if I get a KL, there's some different numbers thrown around depending on some parameters, but let's say that's 1 over 1.0, okay? There's some something called guided veins, okay? So what it means is I have a rounded corner like that, exact same thing that I'm trying to draw. And what I do is I have guide veins, okay? So it kind of guides my flow. In some of the courses that I teach, when there's a lab component associated with it, you can just basically draw and you can observe this as well, okay? So the flow is, if, if I look at my streamlines, it's gonna be much nicer, okay? It's gonna be much nicer streamlines. And at, over here, I'm not gonna get any backflow. So as you can imagine, my KL in this particular case can go 0 0.25, that's an example, okay? Depending on some of the other parameters. So there's an advantage in here moving forward. And there's all sorts of components, okay? So I have an elbow, that's a very common fluidic component, okay? And let's say that I have a just a 90 degree, okay? And it's threaded, right? I thread it in. And the loss coefficient for that is gonna be 1.5, okay? However, if I go out and use a flanged one as opposed to a threaded one, I will get to 0 0.3. So there's some advantage over there, okay? I'm not gonna sit down and list them all of them. These are all available. We talked about the 90 degree. We can talk about the 180. We can talk about T's, okay? Again, there's flanged, there's threaded, etc. There will be some losses associated with it. But also important thing is there will be a bunch of valves, okay? The valves are very common fluidic components. And there will be KL values associated with this as well, okay? So for instance, if this is a globe valve, and even if it is fully open, I'm going to get a loss coefficient of 10, which is fairly high as well, okay? If I have a gate valve, which is fully open, then I'm going to get 0 0.15, okay? So you can see there's different types of valves that will, be, will make it significant. A very common one is called the ball wife as well, right? If I have it completely open, then this is going to be 0 0.05, so this is very nice, okay? And you can have different values when I'm closing it's one third value or two, half of it, three thirds or whatever, but this information is available to you to access. I'm not going to have an exhaustive list for us to go over, okay?